Hello, everyone. So, uh, welcome to Rusty Bucket Bay. Uh, I'm not really sure what to tell you or where to begin here because, oh my god, has it been a horrible couple of weeks for me. Um, I recorded this, oh god, about two weeks ago to the point I'm post recording, uh, post commentating this. I've been, like, really ill and just not feeling well at all. Uh, but I'm finally sitting down and post commentating this. It, it's unbelievable that I've actually managed to do this on video, like, for the first time in my life, because I played Rusty Bucket Bay back when I was, um, oh god, I think I, I, play, I played Rusty Bucket Bay for the first time. See, because I didn't play Rusty Bucket Bay the first time I played Banjo Kazooie. I played Rusty Bucket Bay um, the second time I played through. Because the first time I played through Banjo Kazooie, I gave up, uh, I think, at Gobi's Valley. Um, I'm not sure I gave up, I think I just got bored of it by then. Um, I don't know. I don't mean get bored as in like I found the game boring, I mean like, you know, kid boring as in like, you know, you play with something for five minutes and then you want to move straight on to the next big thing, you know, that kind of boring. Um, but once I, I got into the game, though, Rusty Bucket Bay, I, I did get to and it was really bloody hard. Uh, and it's still really hard. Uh, true fact right here at the beginning of this uh, post commentary, it took me two and a half hours to beat this world. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and or, or, another quick fact, actually, this session that I am now post-commentating, I've got it all going right now, like it's an hour and 20 minutes long. So I'm going to be sitting here commentating for an hour and 20 minutes, um, just just so you guys watching uh, in the future will know uh, what I've been through for you. Um, for, for nobody, because nobody watches my videos. Isn't, isn't that wonderful of me? Aren't I a nice person? Aren't I generous? Spending all this time making videos that no one watches. Um, mm. So yeah, I died about five times during this level. But I think you only see three. Uh, three of the deaths. Um, I, I had to edit a whole bunch of this after about, I think, 45 minutes. So when things are edited, I will I will tell you what was edited out um, if I can. I got to try and remember because it was like two weeks ago. Uh, I recorded this specifically anyway. I sat down one day a couple of weeks ago and I said, "You know what? Today's the day I'm gonna do Rusty Bucket Bay," and it just oh god, it, it absolutely blew my mind how after all these years, Rusty Bucket Bay is still a fucking horrible level for me. I still just just struggle with it. Um, I, I actually don't remember what I stopped here for. Um, I think I think I might have been contemplating here. Uh, there's either two things that happened here. One is I was either contemplating where to go next, or uh, someone uh, spoke to me in the background and I had to go and talk to them quickly. I don't know why I didn't cut this. Maybe I saw in the... Uh, I, I actually I edited this uh, uh, about a week ago. So... Uh, and because I've been so ill, I, I don't really remember what it is I edited out and why I kept in. So there might be bits of this that even I don't remember why I left it in. Um, but yeah, uh, po oh god, post commentary is is probably the easiest way that I could have possibly chosen to do this level because actually playing this level was a fucking ball ache, and it would have been such shitty commentary if I tried to do it live. Um, I love those those enemies. They like fart when you kill them. Oh god, it's so good. But yeah, Rusty Bucket Bay is always a, has always been a level that I've uh, struggled with. Uh, back in in the console days when I played it on the Xbox 360, where the music notes uh, stay after you collect them. Uh, I used to find this level really easy because there wasn't the pressure to find all the music notes without dying. Uh, and since I've played the game over and over and over and over and over again anyway, and pretty much know where most things are and how to do most things, I, I don't really struggle too much with, with the levels on the version where the music notes uh, go back. Um, it's just a matter of taking your time and getting the music notes first, and then collecting the jiggies. Um, with me, it's sort of a mixture in between sometimes, because sometimes it's just easy to go for that one jiggy like that one right there, you know, and, uh, while collecting music notes up. But it's always good to know, like, what the hardest parts of the level are, so you don't go there and die. Um, you know, because uh, I said, I think I said in my last session uh, that my friend, when he had done 
his videos of Rusty Bucket Bay had made the huge mistake of going around the outside of this boat first and doing all the things on the outside of the boat when really he should have done what I did, which was uh, what I did right here. Um, the, the thing is, I, I, I really should have just come straight here. I shouldn't have spent all that time collecting music notes uh, because this is the hardest room in the game for me right here. In fact, for a lot of people, this is the absolute hardest room in the entire game. Uh, this is the um, uh, the engine room. Now, the reason this room is so goddamn bloody ridiculously hard is just simply because everything has like ice physics in here. Everything. You will slide off of something that is like barely moving if if you're like unlucky. Uh, and those fans right there are like impossible for me to get by. I just cannot judge like when to jump through them. I think I used to be able to do it better, but I've just I've lost that touch I had. I think I think you do over the years though. You sort of lose that touch uh, that you have with games and um, and sort of how it feels to hold the controller and, and get a feel for the characters and everything. Um, once you haven't played it for long enough, anyway. I haven't played Banjo Kazooie in about three four years, so I'm I'm a little bit out of practice. But it doesn't mean I don't remember everything I learned while playing it when I was younger. Um, but Rusty Bucket Bay, again, is one of those levels that, you know, it's a, a level in a video game that you absolutely dread going to, and as soon as you get to it, that feeling overwhelms you of just, oh fuck, I'm going to fuck something up, I'm going to fuck something up, and then you fuck something up. So, of course, I'm going to die uh, in a little bit, there's like no getting by it, there's no surprise to it, I'm in the fucking engine room. Most people know that you're going to die in the engine room, like at some point, it's just a thing that happens. So yes, I'm going to die in a moment, and then you're going to have to witness me collect all those music notes again. Um, I actually, the only reason I left this footage in is, is literally just because uh, of the jiggy uh, that I collect. Because obviously, whenever the game reloads up after a death, um, all the jiggies are gone, but the music notes are back. So I just wanted to make sure you guys could get some commentary out of me while I was collecting uh, the jigsaw pieces as well as music notes. Uh, also so you can see where music notes are before I go back and get them again and stuff. It's, it's going to be a very awkward session this because I, the editing on this was really hard to do because I had to decide what should be left in and what should be left out. Uh, you know, what wasn't worth leaving in and, and what took up too much time and because uh, I mean like two, over two and a half hours of footage is far too much for, for like one level in a video game, it really is. Uh, an hour and 20 minutes is, is you know, it's better because it's only five episodes really, so, but it's, it's not terribly better. I mean that's, that's five episodes for a single level in a video game, if it's taking me that long for Rusty Bucket Bay, although then again I'm pretty sure it's going to take me that long for the next level in the game as well. Um, Oh man, I, I, I always grimace looking at this, like whenever I see Rusty Bucket Bay in, in, in this game, it just, it makes me cringe massively, because this level just always gave me so much of, of an issue. Also, what am I doing here? I thought I died at this point. Maybe this isn't the point I died at yet. I'm thinking too soon, we're only eight minutes into the session here. Um, I'll be stopping around 15 minutes. Uh, oh, 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 I thought I left this out. I was. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wow. Um, I actually, I thought that um, I'd, I'd left out by accident that honeycomb footage, and uh, my pre-recorded footage is actually gone now. I thought that I, I had, like, had everything that I needed for a post-commentary, so I deleted all the assets and stuff, but uh, luckily enough, I have uh, everything I need on here. So, there really isn't any better way I could have edited this than the way it is edited. You'll, you'll see as time goes by. Uh, you'll see cuts and, and whatnot, and, uh, and I'll have to tell you exactly what I cut from. Um, I cut from my wrist. Jeez, uh, what do I talk about here? Um, it's really, it's really, really weird looking back on your footage uh, rather than actually seeing it live for yourself. When you're sitting there playing the game, you've got the feel of it in your hands and your sort of commentary uh, bounces off of that feeling. Um, but when you're post-commentating like I am now, you just sort of look at the footage and you're just like, oh shit, what was I thinking here, you know, what, what did I do that for, uh, what was my movement here and why did I do it? Because you don't really tend to remember what your emotions were at that split second that you were doing that exact thing. 
uh, other than, you know, rather than when you're like live commentating and you're in the moment and you know what your feelings are because you feel them right there and then. Um, I don't, I don't know, man. It's more or less just a chance for me to chat and uh, and, and get some some talking in, really, some genuine talking, rather than, than all of that. You know, okay, we're going to go here and do this. You know, talking about just the game, because uh, generally with my commentary, that tends to be what I like to do is just talk about what's happening on screen and explain it. Um, that might be annoying to some people, but I, I quite enjoy it. So. Oh, sorry, I took another drink there. I um, I don't, I don't really know what to say about this because Rusty Bucket Bay again is just—it's the hardest level in the game for me, and it's just because of this room. Everything else in this level is fine, like everything. I, I don't care about the oil, uh, the oily water. Sorry, I don't care about uh, all of the sort of death traps around the boat. I, I don't, I don't care about the. Uh, the drowning and all that, you know. I don't care about any of that. The, the one thing that, that just I fear to death in this level is this bloody room. And I tell you what, I spent so much time in this room during the session, I must have spent uh, about 15 minutes of footage or 20 minutes of footage just in this fucking room. Like, it, it's just, it's ridiculous how hard this room is, you know. And I mean, I'm, I could pretty much call myself a veteran Banjo-Kazooie player. Because I, I've been playing this game, or I have played this game for a long, long time. And I know everything about this goddamn game. I don't need cheat books or, you know, game facts to tell me how to play this bloody game. I know where everything is, and I know how to do everything. But this room still gets me every fucking time. You know? And I think, actually, yeah, here it is. This, this is it coming up, is where I die. Yep, there it is. First death. Da 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 da. First death of the bloody game right there. Wow, your best note score for this world is now 44. You have no idea. Like, I, I remember my emotion that moment. When when that turned up, I like, it's just so disappointing. Like, when you're trying to go for 100% in this game and, and you see that pop up after dying, and you're just like, you feel so disappointed. Because it's just like, oh man, 44 notes. I only had 56 to go. You know? <laughs> You get so disappointed in yourself, man, and I, I was, I was really disappointed in myself there because, like, I, w I wanted to come in this level and I wanted to just own it. I just wanted to finish it in, like, an hour and just be like, yeah, I'm a boss at this game, but no, of course, I, my cockiness got to me eventually. Um, that just happens in the end, I guess. Uh, I, 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 want, I like these guys. I just want to talk about those guys there for a second, those goblin guys. I really like them. Because, like, there's creatures like that all throughout this game, right? Like, in the very first level in Mumbo's Mountain, you've got the, uh, the weird goblin creatures that are, like, Mumbo's villagers and stuff. Uh, and then you've got, like, different variants of those creatures in, like, different worlds. Like, you've got ghost versions of them in Man Monster Mansion. Um, and you... Uh, oh, actually, where else are they in this game? Um... Oh god, I actually have forgotten where else they are in this game. They're not in Treasure Trove Cove, they're not in Clanker's Cavern. Um, oh, they're in the next level, uh, after this one. Um, oh god, I've actually forgotten where else they are in the game. Other than here, I mean. Um, well, anyway, yeah, I, I like them. I think they're really cool. Because they've literally just taken this weird goblin creature and they've just put sailor clothes on it. And that's it, you know, that's 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 the uh, game's version of a sailor, you know. These weird creatures in sailor suits. Um, so yeah, that's, that's me actually managing to jump through that fan right there. Um, also, this was me actually coming back into the engine room for the purpose of strictly getting the music notes. Um, I won't be actually doing uh, the jiggy that you get out of this engine room until way, way, way later. Because I didn't trust myself with it. I wanted to get all the music notes in the level before going for this jiggy. So, um, so you're going to see... I think I might... Yeah, yeah, I die here again. Um, and then you have to see me collect all of those music notes again. I'm not sure why I left that piece of footage in. Maybe I was just really tired when I edited this. But, um, but hey, it only lasted a couple of minutes. That's fine. It's no big dealio. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe I just sort of... I actually, I've actually lost my way with my conversation there, wait a minute. Trying to like, 
figure out what it was I was talking about there. Could I always do that? I always like I, ha I have a half a conversation happen, and then I just forget what I was saying. I'm pretty sure loads of people do that though. Uh, well, you know. Well, you know what? Actually, I I, I was thinking about um whether I should uh, you know do what the game grumps do. Uh, with this post commentary and like every time it gets to around 15 minutes just be like yeah I'll see you later and you know then start up again just be like hey guys we're back but then I thought to myself you know what it's 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 not my style man I, I like straight on full on commentary you know that sort of stopping at 15 minutes and then saying goodbye and then saying hello again like two seconds later it's just not my thing I'd rather just go straight on it's coincidental, actually. I look at the time of the footage now, and it's 15 minutes and 41 seconds, so I probably did actually just cut the video. 